welcome to Mission Park Cares, where we're preparing for Memorial Day weekend, where we're honoring and saluting our men and women in uniform. Today, we're headed to the Alamo to hear what you all had to say to our troops, and then we'll visit a very special museum at Fort Sam Houston. We're also going to visit with an inspiring Army chaplain and see how his faith inspires everything that he does. But first, here's the true story behind the National Cemetery at Fort Sam Houston. And afterwards, we're going to pay tribute to the men and women who have worn our country's uniform. The Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery is not just another burial ground. It serves as a daily reminder, a reminder of the men and women who gave a part of their life to serve their country, and for some, paid the ultimate sacrifice. Established in 1926, this hallowed ground was one of seven national cemeteries created during the expansion of the national cemetery system the first major expansion since the Civil War. For more than 120,000 veterans, this is their final resting place. It's home to 27 Buffalo Soldiers, 12 Medal of Honor recipients, four British Royal Air Force officers, several members of the famed Tuskegee Airmen, two four-star generals, one of them the first general of Hispanic heritage. It's also home to the first female Major General in the U.S. Army, as well as a U.S. Congressman with a Purple Heart and a Silver Star, and a former Heisman Trophy winner. No matter the accomplishments or rank, the headstones sit uniform across 330 acres of undisturbed land, perfectly aligned from every direction, a characterization of who they once were and what they still represent.
Now, let's go meet Bob Fuller with First Presbyterian Church, who has a message for our troops and their families. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and greetings from First Presbyterian Church of San Antonio. So good to be coming to you this weekend to celebrate Memorial Day and to come together as a community. San Antonio is a military city. That means that we remember those who are serving right now, but we also pay special attention to the gifts and the sacrifices of all those who have paid the ultimate price in the defense of our liberty, our freedoms, and frankly, in defense of the things that we hold most dear, those people that we love and the places that we love. And so we thank you for tuning in today as we remember that God has called everyone to serve our community. But there are certain people who throughout history have given that extra bit of service, that last full measure of devotion that has always meant more, not only for their lives, but for all of us. And so today, as we remember not only those who gave their lives in defense of our country, but the families that gave their loved ones in defense of our country, let's come together and let's pray and remember that God has come to us offering us opportunities to serve and empowering us with boldness and courage. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that today we may celebrate those who have given their lives in defense of this country, who have given their lives for the sakes of their families and their communities, and in the most real and powerful way have offered their blood, their sweat, and their tears for love of their fellow man. Lord, today we just ask that you would protect the families who have lost those that they love. We ask you that you would give them peace and security, that you give them comfort and clarity. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would give them a rich well of strength from which they may draw. And Lord, we ask that you would empower all the rest of us, those who have benefited from all these great sacrifices, to share our love and to step into our duty of taking care of those who have, who have given so much in defense of our country. Lord, we know that there are many who have given some, but there are some who gave all. And we ask you to help us to remember their dignity, their honor, their courage, and especially their love. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for being with us today. We hope to see you at First Presbyterian Church of San Antonio. Please come. We'd love to introduce you to our mission of loving Christ, loving one another, and loving the city. Kristen, we've gotten to know a chaplain who's a true man of faith. That's right, and he has shared messages with us on this program for the last two years. And I'm gonna say it's high time that we get to know him better. I agree. Here's John Elizondo with that inspirational story. We are here with U.S. Army Chaplain Deji Aduru, and Deji, just kind of tell me uh, a little bit about what an Army Chaplain does for, for our military. So the Army Chaplains, are they are very, very, very valuable member of the team. Uh, they are, are combat multipliers, and uh, they are there to support the service members and their family members when it comes to spiritual uh, uh, situations or needs. Uh, they are there to advise the commander on morale and ethical situation that goes on within the organization. And also they do a lot of stuff, you know, the Army chaplains are there to provide services uh, on military uh, chapels. Uh, they are there for counseling. They actually help a lot of people in guiding them through day-to-day -day challenges. Did you just kind of tell me how you became an Army chaplain? Also, originally when I came in about 20 years ago, June 6, 2002, I came into the military. I came in as an enlisted soldier, an E-4. Uh, before joining the Army Chaplaincy, I've always been thinking about being a chaplain, even as an enlisted soldier, when I first came in. But there are some things that is required of me. I have to have a degree. I have to have an experience in ministry. I have to already done some things. Being an enlisted soldier, I went back to school I did my master's in divinity. So with years of experience that was able to acquire through some assistance and supervision of some pastors, including my father, which happens to be a pastor, I was able to, to realize that this is the field 
that I'm really caught into. In a time like this right now where we're, we're more at peace, uh, how important still is it for, for your position and, and for you know, soldiers to still have that, that peace of mind, that faith, that you know, uh, something still in, in, inside of them that they can kind of keep them moving forward and, and keep you know, pushing them to, to be great? Oh, I, I tell you, one of the blessings of having a chaplain, even in the midst of formation, is to have a source of hope. Because you think about soldiers that we have, many of soldiers have to leave loved ones, have to leave fathers, mothers, or even if you marry, some days you have to leave your loved one and go to the field. But the presence of a chaplain brings hope. Because you're not just looking at a person in uniform, not just a soldier, but you're looking at a pastor, a rabbi, an imam in uniform that prays and uh, prays and preaches to you and tells you that yes, today might be, you might be far away from your family right now, but guess what? They're waiting on you to see you when you get back home. Just that a source of reminder. I understand you're going to be leaving us to go to Germany for a while. Kind of explain to us uh, what, what you will be doing over there. Also, my job is simple. I'm still going to be a chaplain, uh, except for the father. My nature of chaplain job is going to be different. I'm going to be serving as a community chaplain, uh, which, is, which is a big deal uh, for many chaplains because now I'm leaving a, a, a certain numbers. Now I need to take care of a bigger number or a bigger group of people and families. So my job is going to be to look out for, you know, and support the needs and, uh, of family members and their, law, and their soldiers, soldiers and family members down in Germany when I get over there. And also I will be serving under the super, supervision of senior chaplain that already have a lot of experience so I can also grow. Deji, we're getting close to Memorial Day. Obviously, it means a lot of things to a lot of people all around uh, America. But for you, what does Memorial Day mean to you? To me, I think a Memorial Day is a sort of time of reflection. That we reflect what we do. Why do we do what we do? Because for everything that we do, there's a cost. What does the cost mean? How do we reflect through wearing the uniform? laying everything down, understanding the cost of having this uniform, understanding the cost of being a soldier, but still, we're still happy to do it. Just reflecting, having a good grip for our own self and for all those that have served before us and those that will become behind us. Well, Deji, thank you so much for all you do for our military, for our troops. For everybody in America, thank you so much for your service. We really appreciate it. Dick, Memorial Day will be here in a week. You went to the Alamo to hear what people had to say. What did they tell you? Just wait till you hear the pride and gratitude for our military. Hi, I'm Dick Timms. I'm Stephen Barba. Hi, I'm Carol Barba. Hi, I'm Kristen. What's your name? I'm Sarah Walters. Oh. Hey, I'm Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. Aaron. Patrick. And what is your name? I'm Ethan. David. Hi, David. Christina, and this is Alina. What does Memorial Day mean to you? I think it's critical as a veteran that we remember the dead. And uh, you go around here and you see the memorials uh, that uh, have made this country what it is. We know families that have lost loved ones, and it just means a lot to us because it's so personal. We've always made sure that on Memorial Day, even when our kids were young, uh, we would take them to the uh, Texas State Cemetery so that they could visit the graves and understand what was given so that they could have the life that they had. So, What does Memorial Day mean to you? Uh, absolutely everything. I mean, you know, there's, there's really no words for the people that take care of us um, off the shore, on the shore. You know, I mean, we're able to walk around in freedom. It, it means a lot to me personally. My dad served for years and I've lost family members before. So this day, it's just one of the most important days, in my opinion, holiday-wise, to really celebrate the people who laid their lives down for us and so, honor them. It's a day that we remember those who uh, put their lives out on the front lines uh, in the military uh, who served for our country. I agree. I think Memorial Day is a great time to reflect and uh, be grateful and think about how blessed we are that we had people who were willing to go 
and uh, and fight for this beautiful country that we have. What do you feel like when you see the, the Shrine of Texas Liberty behind us and Memorial Day? It's it's amazing. It's, it's tear-jerking, honestly. Yeah, this is definitely a place where you got to take things seriously. What comes to comes to mind when you when you think about the Alamo? Very cool to to see just how far people were willing to go for their freedom and uh, the stand that was made here. It's uh, it's really cool to come down here and witness that uh, that history and see where uh, all those uh, famous events took place. You know, you you hear the phrase "Remember the Alamo" and you finally get to come here and learn what that's all about. Memorial Day is for those who've died, and I think the Alamo is an excellent representation of that as we're going back and seeing the history and being able to walk through these places where they walked and pay respect to them and, and acknowledge their sacrifice of mm -hmm. what, they, what they did here. What does liberty and freedom mean to you? It's the ability to live as the way in which one chooses, the way to be able to live how you want, the freedom to live how you want. It's basically the ideal way to exist in a country. From a mom's point of view, what does it mean to have a son in the military? Well, we were very proud of him when he made that decision, very proud of him. I think the most proud was when, when he was at West Point, his class, they pick mottos, and the motto that his class picked was for more than ourselves. And it just, I mean, you can't ask for more than that. But that's what all these brave men and women are doing. I mean, they do it for more than themselves. So that's, that's what it means to us. Is there anything you'd like to say to the military today? Well, we're just grateful and thankful for our troops. It doesn't matter what branch of the service they were in. Uh, it's important that they are there for us. And we appreciate it and thank them. Yes, thank yes, you. Yes, we appreciate their service. Thank you. Thank you. Our appreciation for our armed forces is a real tradition in San Antonio. That's right. And here's Father Aguilar with some incredible words of wisdom at Texas Military Institute for all of us. Good morning, I'm Father Richard Aguilar and I'm on the campus of TMI Episcopal, my alma mater. When it was founded in 1893, it was West Texas Military Academy, founded by the Episcopal Bishop in San Antonio, and then later became TMI when I graduated. At that time the campus was in Alamo Heights, now we're in Northwest San Antonio. And as I think of Memorial Day, I think of students who came to TMI with our ROTC program, those who entered the military after school, those who went to a military academy and served in our country, and those that gave the ultimate sacrifice. They offered duty, honor, and country. And it, it's inspiration for all of us as we recognize those fallen soldiers who gave their life for our democracy, for our freedom, for our liberty, and pray that we always remember those persons, neighbors, friends, part of our family, including my cousin Nick, who died at Vietnam in 1970. So pray, remember, and hold up those virtues of our nation, of duty, honor, country. Let us pray. Gracious God, who calls us to liberation through our Lord Jesus Christ. May we always be about the struggle and the gratitude and embrace the virtues of duty to do what is good, of honor, to respect every person and country, to work for the very best for our nation. This we pray in God's holy name, God who is Father, God who is Son, God who is Holy Spirit, Amen. So as we think about Memorial Day and look forward to that day in which we remember the men and women who gave their life for the freedom, liberty, and democracy of our country, remember the words of President Kennedy, to ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Be blessed and do all your best and do good for our nation, the United States of America. Thank you and blessed Memorial Day to you and yours. Dick, you paid a visit to the Medical Museum at Fort Sam Houston. Will you take us there? I'd love to. I want more people to see this because my toes are tingling. We have a rare occasion to be at the Army Medical Museum here at Fort Sam Houston. And I'm visiting with my new dear best friend, George Wunderlich. George, this is an amazing collection. Can you tell us a little bit about what am I looking at? Yeah, well, right here you're looking at two of my favorite objects. 
And there's an interesting history to San Antonio to these first mechanized ambulances. In 1916, the Army actually sent a number of ambulances here for trials. How do we know if they work? Well, Pershing's going into Mexico after Pancho Villa. Let's send a bunch of ambulances with him and let's see how they perform. We'll get a report on those. These two examples show us what early ambulances looked like. And what's really interesting is this same vehicle, the one that you see here, this GMC, if this was pulling uh, just boxes of ammunition, it would actually have solid rubber tires, not balloon tires like these. They reserved the rubber balloon tires for the ambulances to give a smoother ride to the patients. San Antonio, right here, we're at the center of it. Where you are, and, and I noticed that you have a horse, so you have a one horsepower uh, ambulance, obviously GMC, Model T Ford, and what about the Willis Jeep? We've got a uh, 1941 uh, Jeep over here that I just love, and it actually has an improvised stretcher carry. You know, the Army, it's interesting, at the beginning of the war, the men themselves said, we need something from to take the stretchers from the stretcher carriers and get them to where the big ambulances can go. And so they started building these improvised stretcher carriers, nothing more than, than iron uh, rails, and they would modify the Jeeps with these modern rails, and the men did it themselves. And you're actually the first one to hear this. I just requested from the Army, they're gonna be turning over a Model 27, which was the early war version developed in the 1930s, the half ton. So you'll be able to see the half ton, the three quarter ton replacement, and the quarter ton Jeep all in one place. How proud we are of the military. And George, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being on Mission Park Cares to be able to explain just a, just a snippet of, of, of the vast amount of, of things that we have that we live with every day that we don't realize how important they are to us, especially today on Memorial Day. Thank you, sir. Dick, thank you. And if you ever want to come back for that six hour special, I'll give you the rest of this. That's a deal. We want to thank everyone who sent in a picture of their mother or grandmother for our Mother's Day special. We were very excited to have so many requests and we couldn't fit them all in on last week's show. So guess what? Here's another heartfelt in memoriam presentation to the women we'll never forget.
Kristen and I want to thank you for joining us today on Mission Park Cares. We invite you to pay tribute to a soldier that's no longer with us in our In Memoriam Tributes next week. And if you would be so kind, you'd go to missionparks.com and upload your picture. We are so proud to live in Military City, USA and to serve so many military families. And always remember at Mission Park, it's our mission to care. See, See you, you next week. week.